of the Jerusalem Press Club, JPC, another one in the series, Israel is Alive and Kicking, uh, uh, this time with Dr. Gadi Taub on the Supreme Court and politics. Timing is perfect because as we speak, the Supreme Court is deliberating the question. Uri, I think you're going to mute. Can form a government. Yes, I appreciate if everybody switches to mute. Uh, Gadi Taub teaches at the uh, Department of uh, Communications at the Hebrew University, also a senior lecturer in the School of Public Policy. He has a PhD in American history from uh, Rutgers. And he has worked regularly in the Israeli press as commentator, both in print and broadcast media. He's the author of many books, scholarly and fiction. Uh, Dr. Tab will start with a short introduction and then we'll open up for q and In the meantime, I appreciate it if people stay on mute. Uh, Dr. Tab, you've been a long time critic of, the, of what you called the imperialism of the Supreme Court. Can you tell us a bit about it and then we'll move to the current issue? Sure, yeah, I just, uh, I just looked it up because um, people now are identified the issues with left and right and I was on the left and now I'm on the right, but I just saw that seven years ago I wrote in my rib that one day those people will think that they can um, de uh, deliberate and appeal about the results of the elections. And this is what we're seeing now. This was written in 2007. So I think the first thing to know is that there is no um, judiciary in any proper democracy that has such powers as the Israeli Supreme Court. There is absolutely, in its own opinion, absolutely no limit to its power. There is nothing that it thinks is not a judge. Uh, pos that, it is, that it isn't possible to judge, I'm, I'm afraid I can't pronounce that word, a uh, never mind. Um, and there is no check and no balance to oppose its power. So, so it has, it, in, in its own opinion, it holds sovereignty because it can, uh, it has the final say on anything whatever, any political decision, any legislative action, any administrative action, all is appealable to the Supreme Court and, and, and now it has done something which is mind boggling because it refused to deliberate the question whether um, uh, Netanyahu, who's been indicted, can form a government. Now, Israel's laws clearly say that he can form a government, but they, th there were appeals before the elections and they said it's not ripe yet to discuss. So they sent us all to the, the polls to uh, elect the government, and now they're deliberating whether retroactively they will accept uh, the, the decision by the citizens in the polls. This is not a democratic way of thinking at all. And they've also developed a theory in which um, elections are only the procedure of democracy, while the essence of democracy is human rights, conceived in a very narrow liberal sense. So the question then is always, how do we protect the essence from the procedure? So in, in their whole language and attitude, um, it, it, it always hovers in the background, the feeling that they think that you need to protect democracy from citizens. Um, and this is the way they have been behaving. So now this is coming to a grand climax. My guess is that if they will basically nullify the results of the elections, which is a very, very extreme move, then we are, going, we are heading for a fourth round of election. And in the fourth round, it will be an election about the authority of the Supreme Court. So, so that's it. In, in, so you think that by uh, deliberating or ruling about it, uh, the Supreme Court will uh, attract more fire from the public? Oh, absolutely. If they do that, then, then about half the public would feel that, that they have basically 
sent to the trash are uh, voting uh, envelopes. So um, I, this is going to be a major storm, but they are so isolated and they are supported by a very liberal press who's encouraging, it, this is very similar to what had happened in America. So you had, you had an impeachment process that was going nowhere and a liberal press cheerleading it. So, th so the liberal press is now, and, and the situation is of course different, and the liberal, the liberal press is now cheering them on to rule in direct opposition to basic law government. We, have a, we don't have a constitution, but we have basic laws. And basic law government is like a section of the constitution which deals with the executive branch. And in that law, it says explicitly that you cannot rule out a prime minister because he is indicted. You have to wait till he is convicted. And you have to wait till the last appeal of his conviction. So the, the authors of our, of our basic rights considered exactly this situation. They, what they wanted to do is to prevent an attempt by the civil service to usurp the elections. And, and, and what the very fact that they even deliberate this is, in my mind, an amazing um, um, feat of audacity. On Tuesday at uh, 4 p.m., we're going to host uh, Professor Susan Avot, who is an expert on the constitutional law, and we'll hear uh, more about it. But as a layman, can I uh, propose to you that uh, Netanyahu right now is not a prime minister, but a Knesset member, and therefore the law does uh, allow or does prohibit him from uh, forming a government? Absolutely not. There is, beside the basic law government, there is also a regular law government. And in that law, they are debating what should a future prime minister do if his legal proceeding started before he formed the government. Exactly the situation we are now facing. And the whole uh, section of the law is debating only the question in what kind of court should his case be heard while he's forming a government. So there is a huge spin in the, in the liberal press as if there is a lacune in the law and, and this topic is not addressed. It is explicitly addressed and, and one can go to the protocols of the Knesset to the, the proper committee, which is the Committee on Constitution and Law, uh, and, and read what the intention of the lawmakers was. And this is exactly their intention. Their in intention was that a, a, in, in Israel, there is the, the uh, legal counsel to the, to the government, who is also the attorney general. He's, so he's both the solicitor for and against the government. And he, he can decide on indictments. And the whole thing is designed to prevent a situation where the head of the prosecution can remove a sitting prime minister or can prevent from someone whom the people will vote for from forming a government. The, the whole law is designed to make democracy superior to the civil service, or as some on the right would call it, the deep state or the fear of the deep state. So this is exactly why they made the law. And what, they, and, and what ju the judiciary now is doing is um, basically telling us that, it, that the, the law is just a recommendation for them. But uh, you talked about the imperialism of the Supreme Court or the uh, too much power that they, uh, that they have. But uh, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think only 20 something times they, they intervene and, and they ruled against the laws of the Knesset. So it's not such a, a problem. Um, it, it's 19 by, by now, but this is a very, very misleading number because they have a thousand different other ways to, uh, to uh, nullify laws, at, but to empty laws of, of their content. And they also have, what in Israel is, is unique, they have a phalanx inside the executive branch. And these are the legal advisors to the ministers. And now the ministers don't, uh, cannot fire them and cannot uh, appoint them. 
and they serve as the avant-garde for the court. And when a minister forms a policy, then his legal advisor can veto it. And the, a legal advisor can veto the policy of an elected official. And, and his way to do it is usually say, uh, this will not pass the Supreme Court. Or worse, he can say, I will not defend it in the Supreme Court. So he is usually, and you have to understand, Israel is a small country, so it's the same milieu. They all come from the same law schools. They all know each other. So this network of, of uh, um, um, lawyers um, is able <clears throat> to paralyze the government. And the most famous thing is that they basically um, nullified the state's ability to uh, have any immigration law. We have a, a problem of illegal immigration here. They struck down four major legislations. But what they do is they is, is a lot of the or a lot of the policies and a lot of the laws they nullified by accepting the law for debate and then recommending a change. So what they do is they warn you that they're going to strike this down. And what you do is you come back with a watered down version. And strangely in the, in the case of immigration law, after they struck down every policy the state had, from, from uh, expulsion to arrest, anything, then the state finally accepted a recommendation by the court that we withhold some of the foreign workers, the illegal immigrants, uh, salary and give it back to them when they leave the country. And now the, the law, the court struck down its own recommendation after the state uh, tried to do it. So, they, and, 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 and what is most mind-boggling, they have accepted an appeal for debate about a basic law. So if originally they said that they can strike down legislation based on basic laws, now they are threatening to strike down a basic law, which is something like if you imagine uh, an American Supreme Court saying it will debate and possibly uh, uh, use a judicial review on a section of the Constitution. This is unthinkable. And, and what this means is they don't think there is anything that is not for them to decide. So uh, you're insinuating or maybe saying that uh, the Supreme Court is not working for the best interest of the Israeli people, but they're looking at uh, human rights or international values which don't necessarily correspond to our uh, reality. Uh, this, it's close to what I'm saying. What I think is that they, I, I, all this should be seen in the context of what um, is the struggle between the nation states and the globalist vision. And the globalist vision is hostile to national self-determination, to borders, um, and to civil rights. That is very often these courts, it happens in Europe too, especially the, the European Union uh, structure, is that they prefer universal human rights to civil rights, so that what they are doing basically is, the, is while they are <coughs> protecting the, the human rights, <coughs> sorry, of illegal immigrants, they're actually gradually, um, um, uh, downgrading the civil rights of citizens. <clears throat> and, and with it, and we see this all over the West, wherever the, the, the universalist view is attacking the legitimacy of the nation state and also democracy. It's a liberal view attacking democracy. What they do is they move the actual political power from elected to appointed uh, institutions. That is usually from parliaments to courts. Let's go back to the current issue and, and let's stay within the framework of the law. Even the law says that there are cases of uh, extreme implausibility. Uh, Uri, you're on mute again. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, uh, so the question is, there's a, there's a term called uh, extreme implausibility. Don't, 
don't you don't you think that the the, the idea that they somebody who's uh, charged with uh, uh, bribery uh, fraud and breach of trust should be prime minister doesn't it fall into the definition of uh, uh, extreme implausibility? Absolutely not. Not only does it not fall in that, in, in that category, there is an explicit law that says that it's not just plausible, it's desired and recommended. And why is it so? <clears throat> it is exactly designed, look, democracy, <coughs> excuse me, democracy is built on the pessimistic assumption that, that it would be run by people who are not angels. This is why we have a separation of the branches of government. And this is why when we think of structuring a government, we don't think of what happens if the prime minister is an angel, we think what happens if he is a criminal. And we also have to think what happens if the attorney general is a criminal. Um, it seems to me that what we're witnessing now in, in the United States is um, a, a very complicated conspiracy at the head of the FBI. So, you know, and in Israel, we had Ud David, who was a, a, one of the very high on the hierarchy of the attorney general, who was basically trucking with a crime organization and has been disgraced and is going to trial. So you have to ask yourself, what happens if these people holding power will try to use it in order to subvert politics? And, and, um, and uh, the, the thing is that, that we have experience with it, at least according to Professor Daniel Friedman, a very important scholar uh, of, of the law and also a former uh, minister of justice, there has been a systematic tendency in the uh, attorney general's office to, to intercept uh, uh, ministers that that they didn't favor, and they had they had according to Friedman's book. I actually have it somewhere here near me. Um, uh, uh, there, there have been multiple times in which they opened reckless investigations in order to 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 intercept politicians. So exactly for this reason, we have a law that says that only a convicted uh, uh, criminal. Uh, is ruled out of, of government and not someone indicted because otherwise indictments would be used as many claim have been used in Israel's history in order to prevent certain politicians from, from um, uh, governing. Well, funny you mentioned uh, Daniel Friedman because he came out loudly against the idea that uh, somebody who's uh, charged with these kind of uh, crimes uh, should be prime minister. He, he called for Netanyahu to, to uh, resign, not for the law to force him to do that. So, but remember, he served under Olmert and he was staunchly against uh, Olmert's resignation when Olmert was indicted. And indeed, he later said that Olmert was indicted because he, Daniel Friedman, uh, proposed uh, structural reforms in the judiciary. And they couldn't target Daniel Friedman because this is a lifelong academic. I don't know that he ever asked for reimbursement on a bus ticket. So they could not find anything him, according to his version. And so they targeted it at Olmert. And unfortunately, Olmert was corrupt to, the, to, to his waist or above, uh, to his forehead, sunk in a swamp of, of, uh, of corruptions, and, and, they finally, and they finally convicted him. Forget, forget the law for a second, forget the Supreme Court. Don't you personally have a problem with the fact that somebody who's indicted with the three great judges should become your prime minister? I think that the charges are uh, verge on ridiculous. Some of them are precedents. Nobody in the history of a democracy has been charged with accepting bribery in the form of a favorable press coverage. Once we accept this nauseous idea, then the state will be able to do the, the, the important work of journalists. So uh, 
this is what I think, but I'm, I'm much less important than the public. The, yesterday I was, I was in, a, in, a, in a televised debate with a former Attorney General, Moshe Lado, and he said, well, what if the Prime Minister is accused of rape and murder? First, I wanna, we have to tell the difference between accused of and committed murder. And then if it is so serious, then this is for the public to decide. I want to remind you that if you want to remove an American president, the procedure is taken out of the court system and the people who decide his fate are themselves elected official, officials in the legislative branch. And so the, 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 if you want to remove a president, you need to ask the sovereign's representatives. Now we had an election and they were adamant on serving the indictments before the election. We all knew what they are and the public said, we're not convinced. You did not convince us that this man is guilty. We know that before, I'm, I'm interpreting what, what it means. It's not that public actually said it, but the results of the election said that we understand that what, what, what the indictments are. We don't trust you because you have been indicting politicians mostly on the, on the right. And don't forget there, there were serious allegations against Benny Gantz and the same um, uh, system of the of the attorney general did not open an investigation until Daniel Dad came. That is the, the the there is a the the public at least believes that all this system is seriously biased for the left, and and therefore we the, the public um, at least many among the public believed that the actual indictments were politically motivated. And indeed, don't forget that this is what the prime minister said. The people believed him. He said, Tikim Tfurim, this is a, 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 a hoax. This is an attempt to, to rig the system in order to remove me. Uh, there's a question, should the, should the court intervene if there are attempts by the executive or lawmakers to change the country's basic laws in order to promote their own personal agenda? Well, uh, the opposition was just about to do that and the court seemed to support it. And in the end, Gantz chickened out because I want to remind you, the opposition did not have a coalition large enough to form a government, but it thought that along with the anti-Zionist Arab parties, they will be able to take control of the committees and then make special laws to rule out Netanyahu. They, and, 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 they, and they said, these are not personal laws. These are laws against people with indictments serving as a prime minister. But if you look at their discourse, they called it the Netanyahu laws. They were going to change the basic laws. Now, uh, uh, the Supreme Court seemed to uphold this because the Supreme Court also doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't care about the separation of the brand of government. And it was up to the Speaker of the House to postpone the vote on the committees and the Supreme Court intervened. I don't know that this happened in anywhere in the democratic world. The Supreme Court forced the Speaker of the House to uh, take the vote on uh, changing the Knesset structure by changing him, by, by replacing him. This is unprecedented in the, uh, to the best of my, my knowledge, in the uh, uh, democratic world. And, and it turns out they didn't know what they were doing because when they tried to force this, Gantz, instead of promoting the, the, legis the, the personal legislation against Netanyahu, actually made a coalition with Netanyahu. Uri, I, I see there are questions from people on the chat. You want me to read yeah. and answer them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gantz and Netanyahu are not trying to change the basic law to form the unity government. Isn't that right? Well, I think that what we're seeing is that, that uh, what they did is a coalition agreement designed not to let the Supreme Court prevent a government from forming. And I think that what they're trying to do is make this uh, clear in a basic law because you have to understand that they, once the laws, the, 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 the judiciary steps into the political arena and once 
it becomes a political actor in forming a coalition, what do you do? What do you do when they say, ah, oh, we're not gonna tell you if, we go, if you, you can finish your coalition agreement and then we can tell you it's null and void. So what they're trying to do is protect the, uh, the independence of the Knesset. And I think they are right to do this. I think this is a very mild thing in what we will, we will see happening. Because if the Supreme Court um, tries to nullify the coalition agreement, there would be a chance that the legislature will nullify the court. And this is, this is a, a very extreme move, and it is, it is not impossible. What they can do is form, they can uh, take from the Supreme Court its power of judicial review and form a, a, a constitutional court, which will be um, composed of representatives of all opinions. Now we have a court that is, uh, as Bendel Yamini, who is a left-winger, said a court that is determined to show that it represents the Meretz party only, which is 5% of the, of the electorate. And they have a veto power over their own appointment. There is nowhere, I think, with the ex possible exception of India, that, that such a, a, an arrangement exists. Uh, you're an expert on American history and politics. And of course, the, the big difference between the two countries is the lack of constitution here. You think this kind of crisis or deadlock will uh, perhaps uh, uh, generate a move to draft such constitution? Is it possible? I don't see how it can be, how can it, how how it can generate a consensus large enough to form a constitution, but it can certainly, uh, if, if the Supreme Court continues to enroach on the powers of the other branches of government, they will eventually react to this specific question. So we may see a basic law regarding judicial review and the relations between the branches of government. You mentioned the, the Arab parties. Do you think uh, uh, it's uh, legitimate to uh, exclude 20% of Israelis from uh, being part of the government? What do you mean is it possible to exclude? It's possible to exclude anyone from being part of the government because when you form a coalition, you, you decide who is a member of that coalition. But I think that the anger towards Kachol Avant for trying to form a coalition based on the Arab uh, parties also has to do with the Supreme Court because these parties uh, don't just express an opinion. And, and people say this is an exclusion of 20% of the citizens. No, it's an exclusion of, it, it, or, or it, it is viewed in the eyes of many Israelis as illegitimate to accept parties who blatantly support the murder of Jews. Um, some of these people have expressed enthusiastic support for the worst of terrorists against us. And Israel is uniquely, uniquely tolerant in allowing these people to serve in our government. Some of them are explicitly bent on the destruction of the Jewish state. So if what people asked of, of, of uh, the anti-Bibi coalition is, do you prefer anti-Semitic terror supporters like Kiba Yazbak to Bibi? Is, is Bibi so nauseous to you that you would rather team up with someone who, who supports, in this case, she, she, um, she expressed her admiration for Samir Kuntal. This is a man who took a four-year-old girl and smashed her head to a rock. Um, and he is a hero for her. So I don't think that in any other country, if, if in the United States someone supported the murder of Americans, um, I, I don't think that they would be anywhere near the, uh, the, the legislative branch and probably not in their home. They would probably be in a federal jail. Okay. Uh... Last question. If the court rules that Netanyahu can serve as prime minister under indictment, but not as deputy prime minister, um, which is the coalition agreement, uh, what do you think will happen? Fourth elections? This is a very good question. I don't know. Um, uh, I, th I, I think that according to the agreement that they have formed Gantz and Netanyahu, 
this is what they mean, that if this whole package of the rotation between them is somehow rejected by the courts, then they will go for a fourth election. And, and, and if that happens, as I said, I think the election would be specifically on the question of sovereignty. And if the court is going there, it is, it is courting disaster. Because all I've said in criticism of the court is in my view designed to save it from its own hubris. We need a Supreme Court, we need a strong Supreme Court. But if it overreaches, then it, it, it skews the whole balance of powers. And in the end, it is going to find itself, it's now riding high, but it, it will find itself the target of so much criticism that it may completely um, um, annihilate its, its, its power, which depends on the public trust. Dr. Gavditov, thank you so much for your candid uh, views. Uh, stay tuned to our next webinar on Tuesday, 4 p.m. with constitutional expert, Professor Susan Abbott on the Supreme Court deliberation. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.